this is the new service that I'm using for the uh, Sunday sessions. I'm going through StreamYard, and the first time that we've tried this out, I'm going to make a wee start. Uh, this is sound bathing. Through this, it's going to be uh, three bits. I'm going to cover a bit on perhaps the foundations of sound bathing tradition. Then we've got uh, two guests coming up, one who has developed sound bathing with all the wonderful gongs and balls and tuning forks and wonderful instruments, very relaxing. And then uh, a second guest, I'll give her the names a bit later, uh, who didn't realize she was a sound bathing uh, person until I mentioned it a few days ago. Uh, because she works uh, with uh, Forest School and with people out uh, in nature. And through the downtime has been studying bird song and tree sounds and the sounds of nature and realizing that's quite a transition. Half an hour, it's not going to be a sound bathing session. Uh, it's going to be very much a, a foundation thing and the, you'll be given some contacts. Uh, really... Um, Focusing on the fact that everyone lives their own rhythm, uh, their own drum. One thing, uh, go back into ancient times, the two guests coming on, they might be able to explain to you better than I the ancient traditions that have come forward that they've taken parts of rebuilt for their own practices. Uh, the one thing that's always been there in ancient times, is, before we even started singing songs and playing tunes probably, is the music has always been used for enchantment. And of course that enchantment, we hear of the three strains of the, the ancient bards, the gorn tree, jean tree, and sion tree, from the melancholy to the joy, to the dreaming, the sleep and dreaming. And I would say in sound bathing, it's very much a transition of this. So the ancient bards were there for enchantment, uh, the three strains. It's, it's very wise to use this in therapy, in healing. And of course, in ancient times, you'll hear the stories of where it was used in cursing. Now, I noticed that the, the camera is sort of bah, 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 as if I'm a, a member of craft work. <laughs> it's not like the usual Sunday sessions where the camera latency uh, is usually pretty good. But I am using a very old camera because I've got out some very old equipment. And got my old trusty Blue Yeti microphone out. So I'm not sure that this half hour is going to be a kind of sound healing for you. But I think when people think of music, uh, they're thinking of it in terms of entertainment in various form. And that seems to have come out of the Greeks and the Romans. It's as if sound bathing is an extension of that. And I think it's the other way around. Other thing was uh, Claire and I were in uh, Thailand. I'm not sure if it's two or three years ago. And outside all of the temples there, anywhere where there's a bit of a market and there might be some tourists around, they sell all kinds of sound bathing. Uh, wonderful instruments, actually. And the bowls are there. The tunes are there. Their own traditional instruments are there. And little gongs and also wind chimes. And the one comment that I picked up from some of the traders is that Tibetan bowls don't actually come from Tibet traditions. I haven't looked this up further. Some of you sound bathing people might be familiar with that. Uh, that it's, it's almost like the uh, English muffins, uh, that in England now they're making English muffins uh, because people from the U.S. are expecting them when they come over. Before I gather, it was a mistake when someone was trying to make crumpets in New York. And likewise, uh, in China, they're selling Chinese, they've got Chinese takeaways, selling California Chinese takeaway food. And I gather the French are starting to get quite an addiction to their French fries. So it seems that the Tibet and bowls a little bit into that tradition. I'm going to pass you over to some sound uh, people now. I feel that sound bathing is one of these things we are doing now uh, that's uh, part of the rebuilding uh, of old traditions in a new way. So I'm going to try and pass you over to uh, Parashanti Kaur, who's going to introduce her to a, her practice for a few minutes. There she is. Oh, great. Well, Parashanti's on the right there, and I'll bring her on solo. Fire away. 
thank you so much. Um, hi, everyone. Lovely to connect with you on this Sunday. I'm here in Westport, and it's really exciting. It's beautiful thunder and lightning and rain, which I always love. So John was asking me to come on and talk a little bit about the work I do. I'm a certified uh, sound therapist. So I do do the sound baths, but I also work one-on-one -on -one with people with the instruments on the body. I know some of you will have, ex have experiences, so forgive me if I'm going over anything, but just from the basics, really, John was mentioning the bowls. This is one of my bowls. This was my first bowl. Um, and these brass bowls, these different kind of bowls, as I'm sure you're aware of, we have crystal, and then we have bowls that are not made from this different mix of metals and they're usually made on a machine. These ones are hand beaten. And these are the ones that we can use on the body. As John mentioned, the chakras, this would be um, for the root chakra, this bowl in particular, it's a C note. But one of the beautiful things about the bowls and sound healing, as it is, it's similar in the way that Reiki is an intelligent energy. That these bowls connect, their vibrations connect with our own frequencies and they do the work uh, of whatever mm -hmm. needs to be done at that time. I kind of just hand over now. I've worked so long with my instruments. We have a beautiful relationship. They're all very personal to me. And I kind of move out of the way and I let the instruments show me and guide me what needs to be done. They're amazing, really, the longer you work with them, just the intelligence that they have. Um, when I first used to introduce my work, I would give out a list, for example, of the benefits of, of sound, having a sound bath or a sound treatment. And, you know, it's the usual ones, really, that we're looking for, reducing stress, reducing anxiety, reducing blood pressure, actually moving physical pain out of the body. They're very powerful for that because the vibrations go through the body at a cellular level. But now, the longer that I've worked with the instruments, I've come to understand that whatever anyone needs, whatever they come with when they come for a session, the instruments will meet them there. So sometimes I've just become more aware that they can do a lot more than we even are aware of. So even a list would be quite limiting at exactly what these do. So that's my sea bowl. Beautiful sound coming out there. And just on the other end, I'm going to introduce you to my big A bowl. And I'm just going to show you something special and rather amusing that we like to do with this bowl, which is very, very good for you, which I like to show people a lot, is to put it on top of the head. Let me see if I can find a good mallet. So we balance this on top of the head and we give it a little strike. And that is one of the most beautiful experiences you can have. I highly recommend it. Me and my partner, Dad, we put photos on Insta and the net. You'll see it some nights we'll just sit up here in the space, bouncing the bowls on our head and just clear, clears out so much junk. It's amazing. So, yeah, as I mentioned, we have the crystal bowls. These are made of glass. These are absolutely beautiful. One of the beautiful experiences I've had with these is going out at night. There's something about the moon and crystal bowls, moon and glass, and they play differently. So when there's a nice full moon, I'll go out and I'll play out the back here where we have the um, – we have a little cairn. We have the she hill up there. So I go and give thanks, and I play a little bit for the fairies, and I play for the moon. I also work with a drum. So a lot of sound practitioners will come with their own experience. My experience is my own journey as a bit of a nature witch and uh, as a shamanic practitioner. So I would use the drum a lot for journeying. This is actually my dad's original old Irish drum. It's very powerful. It's very beautiful. And this drum is, I can only describe it as otherworldly, really. This drum is very good in my work for showing me where there's entities or attachments on people that need to be cleared or that are ready to clear. And also, I've had amazing experiences out in nature with trees and plants and drumming and connecting with a tree and asking the tree to show me its song. And then you start to channel a rhythm, you start to channel a different 
song and you can even start singing. It's the tree shows you if you take the time and have that connection and it's something you like to do, go and sit with a tree and ask the tree to, to show you its song. And as you play and as you connect, the song will start to come through your drum. And even if you're very lucky, like I've had beautiful experiences where I've actually started to sing and I'm thinking, I don't know this song. <laughs> this is beautiful, but it's the tree's song. And so having this experience with all these instruments really has just enriched my life in so many levels. And then as you can see behind me, there's the gongs, which you might very, be very familiar with, with the gong baths. And then the gongs again are on a whole different level. Um, if you find that you have trouble meditating and it's something that, you know, can cause you anxiety, strangely enough, for, for some people to sit and still and being in peace and being with themselves can be quite a difficult experience. And so just go to a sound bath because the gong will do exactly the same as meditation. It's very powerful. It works on different dimensions. It clears old stuck emotions in the body, as do all instruments. But the gong will also raise your consciousness for you. It's very connected to our mm -hmm. energy, our kundalini energy. And so it can help with releasing old stuff and bringing you back to yourself by connecting with your energy and raising your consciousness. So I'm very aware of that in the work I do um, and through the training I've had that we're here also to help people come back to themselves and come back to nature. And one of the ways I give back is um, by going out and doing outdoor sound baths as well, and specifically to heal the places that we're visiting, the land that we're visiting, and the trees and the plants there. So that's a little bit of what I do. That, that was beautiful. I, I hope you'll do your own session at the time and we'll post that as well. Oh, wonderful. Uh, thanks for sharing. I was, I was, I was almost having the sound bath without having the sound bath. You, especially with the the bowl over the head, I was going to leap out and put a bowl over my head right now. <laughs> oh, thanks very much. But uh, one thing I was saying, bringing uh, ancient traditions and rebuilding uh, tradition. I think one thing, although they won't bring it out in the presentation, but a lot of uh, the sound uh, therapists uh, they actually do bring a bit of science into it because there is very much an, an attention to the tones, the frequencies, and even the beats. And a lot of people are, are experimenting a lot with their tones, frequencies, and beats, especially when they're recording, and <clears> especially <throat> when they're analyzing the instruments uh, they're getting. And one thing I'm, I'm finding as well as more people get involved with the sound therapy and the, the idea of sound meditations uh, they're popping into music shops and there are world music shops popping up and people are buying all sorts of things and claiming that they're part of uh, sound therapy. Uh, as a friend of mine, uh, when she does this, she's got this thing that sounds like uh, the sound of an ice cream van coming down the street. <laughs> so the therapy, I suppose, of thinking about uh, the ice cream is something uh, as fascinating. One thing that's obviously some people are doing is with sounds, and this must have been an early tradition. If someone uh, made a whistle out of a out of a, a wee stick or a plant, that uh, it's there's some way trying to imitate something in nature, uh, and even by scraping things. I've got this wooden frog thing that you scrape it. You go, yeah, I have one. <laughs> and you've got things like that. <laughs> and uh, and then, of course, people putting holes uh, in hemlock, of all things. And uh, But uh, in uh, Elder, obviously the Elder, if you poke that out, we did as children to make little whistles. And then you're using these whistles to try and imitate uh, the birds. So you're imitating uh, bits uh, of yeah. nature at the same time, which is going to be my excuse for pulling in Ina, uh, as I say, Ina Goldman. I think she didn't know she was a sound therapist until a few days ago, <laughs> because uh, <laughs> Ina, Ina has got this wonderful the Lockgill uh, Wilderness. I forget the full title, but it's an education outdoors education. But during the lockdown, Ina has been passing the time because she's got this lovely land around her, and she's been listening to the birds and wondering. Oh, what's that bird? What's that bird? But not really diving for the books from what I gather. She's been 
paying attention to the different sounds in order to identify a bird. And it sounds like this is a, uh, a spread into even other sounds in nature with the animals, not only their screech and their sound, but the way they scurry about. Also, you can tell differences of trees if you pay attention, because in the wind, each of the leaves have a bit of a different sound. And we've got a tree labyrinth here, as many of you have visited. And if you spend time there in the breeze, this is something that really you pay attention to. You don't realize it as you're going around. So I'm going to pass you over to Ina, who's going to do that transition, because it was lovely. Purushant was showing the instruments, and she takes those outside. And there's so much value in that. I'm glad there's more sound therapists doing that. But Ina is going to... Uh, go very wild with you for a few minutes. So over to <laughs> Ina here. Uh, yeah. Hi. Uh, so, um, yeah. Um, I have been practicing uh, natural mindfulness for a while. So uh, I started to, to, to listen, uh, to use my senses more consciously. And uh, especially I enjoy the listening. And... Um, I did one practice quite a bit, which was making sound maps. So I sat down in nature somewhere for maybe 15 minutes or sometimes half an hour. And I draw, I drew everything that I heard. I found my own little symbols and drew little maps of everything that is around me. And in that way, I become very conscious about what I'm hearing. And it's I would I would say it is like a sound bath, but um, you can also, of course, do that without drawing. You can just <clears throat> sit there and take everything in. But the map drawing helped me quite a bit uh, to get into that space and to really become conscious of hopefully as much as possible as I was around me. And I thought that was quite uh, a good practice for me. And then uh, I started to do a course about bird language. Um, I don't know if you've heard about uh, John Young. Uh, John Young and Tom Brown, um, they have uh, found, founded, I don't know if you could say that, founded a kind of movement uh, called um, the Coyote Mentoring or Wilderness Education. And I have uh, gotten quite a bit into that and did a course about bird language. And we started to do bird maps. And I thought that was even... You know, it was getting very interesting there because first I did these sound maps of my surroundings and then I started doing bird maps and I had to learn to identify all the different birds uh, that I was hearing um, and then identify their different sounds because there are some, uh, you know, the normal singing that which they do when they are in a happy mood, let's say, or just calls where they contact each other and say, I'm here, I'm here, where are you? And then some other bird is answering. Uh, and then there are the alarm calls. And all these things, if you're getting really into it and become conscious about all these different sounds about you, it can teach you an awful lot about nature and uh, eventually about yourself, because you're a part of nature. You are nature. And um, yeah, I really enjoy getting into this conscious listening mood. Now, when I'm, when I'm going for a walk, I hear sounds all the time. I just hear, you know, now I'm, I'm hearing the birds over there in the trees. And I hear the rustling in the trees. And like John said, you know, there's, there are always sounds around you. You hear the insects, the wind. If you're outside in nature, I personally, I can just recommend, take out your earplugs. <laughs> don't, listen, don't listen to your CDs all the time. Do that consciously when you're at home, when you have, let's say, nothing else to do, or when you want to consciously hear your music. Um, but when you're out in nature, consciously, consciously listen to what is around you in nature, because there are such amazing sounds. And uh, I read quite a few articles um, about uh, how sounds actually have an, a healing effect on us. And there, are, there is scientific proof that nature sounds have a healing effect on uh, our 
mental state. Oh, now it's starting to rain. I can hear the rain now. Um, <laughs> I can feel it as well. <laughs> anyway, so it's, yeah, if, if you just put it into Google or something and research nature sounds healing or something you'll find lots of scientific proof that it actually brings you in a in a more relaxed mood that it relaxes your mental state you're getting out of the so-called fight and flight mode you're getting into a more conscious more relaxed state and it even can help with sleeping and that's one other thing i want to mention to you there are some great uh, little clips on youtube as well of nature sounds um if you uh, know maybe the name Johnny Lawson, he lives here in our area in Leitrim, and he makes these nature <laughs> sounds videos. Do you know him, John? Uh, he's been so, to the. Of course. He's been here a few times. Oh yeah, yeah. He's uh, well. He's doing quite cool videos. It's just sound, but it helps some people to relax and to go to sleep. And of course, I, I personally yeah. find it nicer to go out into nature and listen to the sounds live. But um, yeah, it's interesting to just, you know, check it out and say anything else I want to. Oh, I just would like to say one more thing. It was mentioned just there a few minutes ago the, that you can channel uh, songs from, for example, or sounds from trees. And um, there's a big tradition in Estonia. I met a few people from Estonia. Maybe you met them as well, John, at a, at a shamanic congress a few years yes. ago. And they have mm -hmm. a big tradition in Estonia of channeling songs from the landscape, from plants, from trees. And it's still a big tradition in Estonia. And I find that really amazing. So it's, um, I think it is something that has has been done here as well and we can see that in the traditional music there are a lot of nature sounds in the traditional music for example birds <laughs> and now i hear thunder i think i better go into the house <laughs> anyway, I, I, said, I, heard I, wanted, I said anything everything that i wanted to say i was going blah, 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 and bring you back to john now <laughs> Oh, that's, that was fantastic, uh, both of you. Yeah, this is uh, this has been wonderful. Thanks for those that have uh, tuned in to watch this. I'm sorry this wasn't set up outside. I was paranoid. I saw the big black cloud over the tree labyrinth. I was going to set this all up. I said no, and it is starting to rain. There would have been a panic right now to bring uh, all of the stuff in. So this has been a, a first time using the, the stream yard. Uh, I like the way it finally came out, even though we had tech issues. It's always like I'm doing a craft work video here. But Ina and Purakshan, they were absolutely uh, wonderful. So I hope you'll join us again. Uh, I'm putting up a, a few banners where you can link because we've had the, the usual Facebook uh, people. Uh, thank you for coming back to this and the patience with it being later. And this time we were simultaneously... YouTube, where is my YouTube banner? Uh, ah, there it is, the Karakroy Journal uh, channel also in YouTube. So thank you the YouTube people uh, that have tuned in as well at the same time. Uh, certainly a round of applause here for the wonderful presentations. I absolutely loved it, ladies, girls. Fine, <laughs> wise women, Prashant and uh, I wish this, this could be more, but I, I do try to keep this within the 30 minutes or so. And I do appreciate you and your patience of hanging on for another 50 minutes while we get rid of the bugs on this. Uh, it's been wonderful. And I hope we'll do something like this again. And I hope you'll do your own individual ones somehow. Uh, so thanks very much. Thank and bye-bye, uh, everybody. And thank you, and, <laughs> and thank you, audience, for being here. And there was a few comments around. Bye, Elvis. Um, what is it? Next Sunday, it's uh, Midsummer Traditions. I'm not sure which medium I'm going to use. I'm going to see if we can do it this way again uh, through the uh, stream yard because I am starting to like this. So thank you again and have a wonderful week. Enjoy the thunderstorms. We'll see you soon. Hey. Thank you. Bye.